What's up guys? My name's Aaron. My name's Connor. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Kingsong S18. And the Inmotion V11. The Inmotion has a pedal type suspension, whereas the Kingsong has a tire type suspension. For the past couple weeks we've had our hands on these pre-production models, so we're excited to give you our take between the differences between those types of suspension, as well as which wheel might be best for you. So let's get into it. So in giving my first impressions for each of these wheels, I want to break down some of the big differences in terms of the ride experience. And between the S18 and the V11, the big differences are going to come down to range, suspension, comfort, and maneuverability. So let's start from the top. If range is important to you, the Inmotion V11 will take the cake. It comes in with a 1500 watt hour battery with a maximum theoretical range of 75 miles, while the Kingsong S18 comes with a 1110 watt hour battery with a reported range of 62 miles. Our pre production V11 came with a smaller 1420 watt hour battery, so stay tuned for our full in depth comparison where we'll do a full range test with the production models. Next, let's break down the differences between the suspension. The V11 is using what we like to call a pedal suspension, while the S18 is using a tire suspension. On the V11, the pedals and this portion of the unit here are actually moving up and down, versus on the S18, where the entire wheel is suspended on the inside. So that actually amounts to some differences in how the wheel feels and reacts to moments that the suspension is needed. Overall, we found that both suspension systems provided a superior ride over non-suspended wheels. The biggest difference being able to ride longer without feeling fatigue. While the V11 was able to eat up some of the smaller bumps that the S18 couldn't, the S18's shock dampening made it more controllable in certain scenarios, as seen in this demonstration here. Note the difference in movement between the two wheels. You can see there's a lot more of a pogo stick type movement with the V11. By locking your knees, you transmit all of that vertical movement into your body. This excessive movement would occasionally cause our feet to vibrate forward on the pedals. You should never ride with locked knees, but on the S18, we didn't have this issue. Here's the full uncut clip so you can see what happened. Reportedly, some changes have been made to the V11 suspension to make it a little bit better, but in our testing, the adjustable dampening on the S18 gave us a little bit more control. Overall, we were pleased with how both suspensions performed. Comparing both of them to a non-suspension wheel, the results are night and day. I felt way more comfortable doing it on either of these wheels compared to a non-suspension wheel. There's a lot of little things that make these two wheels unique, so let's take a look. The S18 has a super nice reversible charge port, while the V11 has two directional charge ports for faster charging. The V11's headlight is super bright, but the S18's is automatic and has three different brightness settings. The S18 suspension is lockable and dampening adjustable. Well, you should probably remove this cap before it gets stuck on the V11. Unlike the S18, the V11 has a built-in kickstand. Kinda. The V11's handle is best in class with an easy to activate trolley and a large cutoff switch, while the S18 implements a two-stage handle situation that can be kind of finicky. The V11 has a battery indicator and slightly larger pedals. Its padding is large, comfortable, and sits slightly higher on the leg, while the S18 has contoured padding for aggressive performance. The next thing to discuss is comfort between the two wheels. So the S18 you know, has this little section down here where your feet can kind of lock into. I wouldn't necessarily say that's the most comfortable thing in the world. One thing to note is that in these pre-production models, this padding in this area and this area is a little thinner than it's going to be on the production unit. However, even with that in mind, I think ultimately the V11 is a little bit more comfortable of a ride, mainly because you have a lot more points of contact here and one smooth portion up and down that you're connected to when you're on the wheel. Neither wheel is uncomfortable, but the V11 might have an edge for beginners. That being said, we did have a chance to try the updated padding on the production S18, and it was much improved from our prototype. The last point to compare between the ride experiences is the maneuverability. The S18 felt much more like a dirt bike, whereas the V11 was a little bit more like a Harley. Basically, the V11 sat higher on the leg, while the S18 felt like it had a lower center of gravity. It's just a matter of getting used to it, but I remember having to throw my weight into turns a little bit more on the V11 than I did on the S18, which really did feel at home on the trails. The V11 is a great cruiser. It's got the long range, it's got the suspension to help take you a country mile in no time at all. The S18 was a lot of fun taking out on the trails, much more like a dirt bike, able to do bunny hops right out of the box. I preferred the customization versus the comfort 
over the V11, but your mileage may vary. All right, so Connor and I decided we wanted to do a little obstacle course to pit the V11 against the S18. Basically, we're gonna speed around this ramp, drop down the stairs, we need to pick the wheel up and go up the stairs, slalom around some of these tables and poles, and then one last bout of acceleration to get to the finish line. And we'll see which wheel helps us to get through all that fastest. Three, two, one, go. I got the S18 cutoff to work once. Felt good. I felt like I could have done better going around there, but we'll see how the mobility is on here compared to the V11 now. Three, two, one, go. V11 felt good too. Because the S18, I got the cutoffs to work right away, they were pretty evenly matched. What but about that first turn? The first turn was hard. I was like scraping the inside. I just couldn't get it to, I just didn't feel as comfortable like digging into the angle as much. So I had to slow down for that, which I didn't on the S18, but you know, it's a big difference in that height. But I don't know, I'll be interested to see the times and how it actually compares. Go. Time. Time. Think that's gonna be the difference maker, the cutoff switch between the V11? I just cannot rely on this cutoff switch to reliably cut off when I need it to. Definitely a bummer. Time. This is where things got interesting. Two, one, go. I had a flawless run with the V11, and we recorded our best time yet. Time. And then this happened. Go. Go, 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 go. What happened? Cut off. Somehow, accelerating out of this turn caused a cutoff, and we're not sure why. I might have balanced it all out then, well, huh? Well, I was surprised. Accelerating around that corner, the V11 just shut off on me. So the trade-offs between the cutoff switch, but then the lack of mobility maybe are balancing the two out? Maybe balancing them out. Honestly, I think the S18's runs were killed by the lack of the cutoff switch. This comparison ended up being a bit of a toss-up. I recorded that one fast time on the V11 that brought the V11's average down, but if we look at Aaron's times, we can see the difference is negligible. If you're a rider that's going to be sticking to simple terrain, like a lot of flat roads, if comfort is a big deal for you and you prioritize the range of your wheel, then the InMotion V11 is the one to pick. And if you're okay sacrificing a few miles of range for a more fully integrated suspension system and a little better maneuverability, the Kingsong S18 might be the one for you. And if you're interested in picking up one of these wheels, there'll be links in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye. Peace. Oh.